Dr. Stephen Gundry is a world-renowned heart surgeon, medical researcher, and author. During his 40-year career, Dr. Gundry has performed 10,000 heart operations and developed patented, life-saving medical technology. He has published multiple best-selling books focused on nutrition and health, including the New York Times bestseller, The Plant Paradox. In this interview, we discuss his latest book, Unlocking the Keto Code, where Dr. Gundry looks at why ketogenic diets are misunderstood and how they can be made more effective and easier to follow. With that, let me start the interview. Um, Dr. Gundry, your, your book, Unlocking the Keto Code, was recently published, where you talk about an alternative explanation for the benefits of the keto diet because of something called mitochondrial uncoupling. So where I'd like to start is to get a better understanding of what is mitochondrial uncoupling and, you know, and how it impacts the keto diet. Yeah, that's a great place to start. Um, we've, uh, we've thought and taught for years that uh, a ketogenic diet or ketones, which are short chains, water soluble fats um, were some sort of great fuel that our brain preferred to use our muscles preferred to use and and that's why you saw all these benefits of a, of a high fat low protein low carbohydrate diet um, with weight loss and maybe even feeling better and better appearance but it turns out that research particularly from harvard and the nih has actually shown quite the opposite, that ketones are really not a very good fuel source and that even at full ketosis, uh, humans actually don't get most of their energy production by burning ketones. So with, and I show why that is in the book. So with that in mind, what in the heck are ketones doing other than being a great fuel source? And uh, research has shown that the way ketones work is actually as a signaling molecule. Now, a signaling molecule basically tells a cell or a mitochondria, which are the energy producing organelles in most of our cells, what to do uh, about the information. And in the case of ketones, ketones would normally only be produced when we ran out of food, when we were starving. And ketones could provide an alternative fuel source for the brain when glucose didn't, wasn't available. But ketones have a much more uh, profound effect. Ketones tell mitochondria that danger is afoot, that times are rough, and that they the mitochondria should protect themselves at all costs, because if the mitochondria doesn't make it, that's the end of things. So in an odd twist of fate, ketones tell mitochondria to not work so hard and to actually waste energy. Now, mm. Simon, yeah, and that seems kind of dumb, mm. but yeah, but at the same time, ketones tell mitochondria to reproduce and make more of themselves to share the workload. Uh, something that people in North America can relate to is a, a dog sled race in, uh, you know, in Canada or Alaska, uh, where if I had a dog sled and I had one dog, the dog could pull the sled, but not very fast. And he certainly wouldn't get very far before he'd tire out. But if I hitch six dogs to a sled, they could pull it much faster. They could go a lot farther. And each dog would only have to exert one sixth of the effort that the one dog did. And only one problem. You have to feed six dogs instead of one dog so they eat more food. Well, interestingly enough, when mitochondria are uncoupled by ketones, they not only work less hard, by wasting fuel, but they grow and divide and make lots more mitochondria to share the workload. So you still end up making the same amount of energy that you need, but you make each individual mitochondria work less hard. And it turns out that 
the evidence is the less hard your mitochondria have to work long-term and the less damage that mitochondria have long-term, not only the longer you live, but the longer you live well, the longer your health span. And, you know, as I've said in previous books, uh, we, wa we all want to live a long time. We just don't want to get old. And so, right. so that's, the, you know, that's, that's the paradox. It is. And, and I, I must admit, like trying to think through the evolutionary purpose of it is of mitochondrial uncoupling is uh, tricky. So, and, and it's something that goes on like all the time, uh, like Correct. 25 to 30% of our energy is being wasted. Correct. Yeah, and it turns out that when mitochondria uncouple, it's almost like if you think of a pressure cooker, it has to have a pop-off valve because if the pressure gets too high, the thing explodes. And mitochondria, because making energy is so damaging, they literally have to have pop-off valves. Uh, and these are controlled by uncoupling proteins. That's where the word came from. And they're literally pop-off valves in mitochondria to throw calories out a side door. 30% of all the calories we eat that enter into the mitochondria to get processed into ATP, our energy currency, literally are uncoupled from this process. And in that uncoupling process, it generates heat. And so one of the purposes of this is we're warm-blooded animals. And so we have to generate heat in our body. And that, I think, explains why it might be a good idea to have, uh, you know, uncoupled mitochondria. Right. So ketones are a fuel source for the brain, but um, they're only a signaling mo molecule for cells. Is, is that correct? I mean, cells can just burn free fatty acids. Correct. All cells can actually burn free fatty acids, um, except the brain. It, the brain could certainly burn them, but free fatty acids are very large molecules and they can't get through what's called the blood brain barrier because they're, they're too big and they get across slowly. So free fatty acids, when they're liberated from fat cells can go to the liver and the liver can transform these free fatty acids into these short chain ketones that are actually water soluble rather than fat soluble. Now, interestingly enough, the liver makes ketones, but the liver can't use ketones as a fuel. So it, the liver releases ketones into the blood. And then you're right, ketones can get through the blood brain barrier and the brain can use ketones really as a temporary fuel until such time we find something to eat again. 